uh, during uh, the future summit by Natural Communication because uh, our guest, uh, Vivian Baobin, uh, who is managing director of Orbit uh, Startups, is uh, the part of uh, one of the most active uh, VC funds, uh, SO3 uh, uh, VC uh, family group. And uh, as well, uh, he uh, used to be previously an analyst with Deutsche Bank, Angel Investor, and uh, as well, uh, he was involved with SoftBank uh, China and India Holdings, the company which was backed by SoftBank and Cisco. Great to have you here, Vivian. Yeah, thanks so much. Yeah, so great to be here. Can you tell about your background? How did you get uh, from the banking into a startup ecosystem, into VC investing? Yeah, sure. So uh, I started off in equity research. Uh, so my job was to cover industry, uh, tech, uh, and uh, basically inform investors from around the world, um, you know, how to uh, best invest in tech companies. Mm -hmm. uh, so I started off in Asia uh, and then covered uh, as a junior uh, PC enterprise hardware in the late 90s uh, and then switched over to uh, Internet in the 2000s. Um, did it for 11 years. It was wonderful. Uh, it was super exciting. Uh, but after 11 years, it was enough. I wanted a new challenge. Mm -hmm. uh, so in the mid 2000s, uh, I switched over from covering uh, internet in Asia, uh, internet in China, uh, which, uh, you know, I, I, I watched grow from $3 billion in total market cap to like $2.5 trillion in total oh. market cap. Um, so I switched over to VC, venture capital, mm -hmm. uh, early stage investing. So instead of telling other people what to invest in, I was investing myself. Um, it's very different. Uh, it was very tough. I thought I could figure it out in four years. It actually took six. Uh, so started uh, investing with uh, SoftBank uh, China India. Uh, running the SoftBank investments uh, on the venture side in uh, early stage back then in Southeast Asia and China. Uh, then went on to a corporate VC, uh, Singtel Innovate, which is uh, the corporate VC arm of Singapore Telecom. They had 400 million mobile subscribers in Southeast Asia and India. So that was great exposure. Uh, but finally, eight years ago, joined Orbit Startups as managing director. Uh, which is a kind of traditional fund where we invest and we get a share of the profit, not like a corporate VC. Uh, and so far, so good. Uh, really glad to share. So how is it different for you, uh, such uh, a shift from advising others who are to invest into than uh, becoming yourself angel investor and now managing uh, VC accelerator program? Yeah, <laughs> so um, if, if you, it's, it's a lot easier to give other people advice and they make the decision yeah, as opposed to... <laughs> Yeah, as opposed to making the decision yourself. Uh, so um, uh, it was pretty nerve-wracking, and we ma I made a huge number of mistakes in those first six years, um, but we, we figured it out. We are uh, very much focused on the early stage, and early stage VC is the best performing asset class of anything that you can invest in, from uh, real estate uh, to, uh, to equities to private equity, um, it's number one. The problem is early stage, uh, you have to invest in many, 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 many companies in yeah. order to capture it. Um, so we are capturing it. We are the most active early stage VC in the world. Uh, we invest in 130, 140 companies a year. Um, but then how do you uh, uh, make sure that you um, de-risk? Because early stage is, you know, is very risky. So yeah. we have a process-based data-driven system uh, for uh, helping our startups uh, survive and prosper. Uh, so we invest, but then we help with our program. Mm -hmm. And so the Orbit Startups program is designed to help the entrepreneurs get to where they're growing, mm -hmm. scale up in their home market, and then go cross-border. Uh, so it's a system, uh, and it's working quite well. So is it uh, like online trainings, online accelerator, or do you make as well offline meetings, offline events? Uh, so it's both. I mean, traditionally, when we started off 2010, it was all in person. It was like a three-month in-person type program. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, and it was an accelerator. We started the first accelerator in, in, in Asia, uh, China Accelerator, 2010. Now our program lasts forever. Uh, so uh, it's no longer an accelerator because an accelerator, by definition, has a start and an end. Mm -hmm. We continue to support forever. Uh, we do this because... You know, when you're going cross-border, you're not going to go into uh, all the markets in three months or six months. Mm -hmm. You know, you go into a market, then you go to the next market. Mm -hmm. So we want to uh, you know, keep on supporting forever. 
Um, and uh, so far, so good. Our survival rate, you know, you have 70% of the companies used to die. You know, now 70% of the companies are living and, and over half are doing pretty well. Uh, so uh, we are trying to not just invest in innovation, mm -hmm. but also innovate in investing. Yeah. Do, do it differently, do it better. So that's probably even more important than just to give uh, funds to invest in the startup. Yeah, it, it might seem kind of funny, but there's unlimited money in the world. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what really matters, I, we believe, is help. So can we be of help? Um, so we do invest, uh, and then we have our program. Uh, we charge equity for our program. Uh, we try not to be too greedy about it, but when we invest, we usually take about 5 to 8% of the company, mm -hmm. and it's actually mostly common stock. Uh, so we're almost like a mini co-founder there with the founders all the way through step by step. So if they make money, we make money. If they don't make money, we don't make money. So we're all in the same boat. And you mentioned before that your uh, checks are small, like 50K or? Uh, so or it's, it's, it's a usually about a... They're all within a range. It's mostly 150 to mm -hmm. 180. It's usually 150. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, 50 of it we keep as a program fee. Mm -hmm. uh, so the actual cash is 100 to 130K. Mm -hmm. uh, and we invest it. Usually it can be in a convertible note with a cap and a 20% discount. Mm -hmm. Or it can be in uh, priced round. We don't really uh, mind either way. We're not so much focused on uh, what, what the valuation is. Mm -hmm. It has to make sense. But we're focused on our ownership target. So we're not too greedy about it. It's like 5 to 7%. I bet. And uh, how do you define what are your criteria when you invest into this or that startup? Yeah, so I think um, what's most important for us is can we help? Okay, mm -hmm. so we uh, do the things through our program that are kind of normal, like mm -hmm. lean startup data, driven decision-making experiments. We help with fundraising after companies get traction, and we help them fundraise. We help them with mentors. Uh, we mentor uh, our teams of almost 40 people. We have our 10 adjunct partners and uh, EIRs, and then we have over 450 uh, mentors that volunteer their time. That's all kind of stuff that's familiar uh, with a traditional accelerator program. Mm -hmm. uh, but the key thing on top is we have an enterprise sales team that helps the startups sell to corporates and businesses around the world, uh, mostly multinationals. And we're very close with about 42 multinationals and 27 multinationals okay, invested in our fund. The other thing that differentiates us from others and why a lot of the, the founders work with us is we uh, want to help our companies acquire customers, acquire users mm -hmm. without paying for advertising. Um, and we've been working on this for seven, eight years. In the early days, it did not work. Uh, now it's starting to work. So about why did it work before? Well, we were going to corporates and we we're asking for free advertising and they said no. <laughs> Um, but I think a lot of our partners have found out that, you know, big internet is really big mm -hmm. uh, and, they, and they need to uh, change the way they do things if they want to compete against big internet. Mm -hmm. um, so we're getting, you know, companies like, a, like Samsung or telcos like Reliance Geo or China Mobile to introduce their customers to our startups mm -hmm. and our startups give them back revenue share. Uh, so we've helped our startups, uh, not all of them, but about 10 to 15 scale from you know, basically nothing to about 50 million monthly active users in 2020. Uh, we hit 102 million in 2021. And as of two months ago, we're at 160 million monthly active users in our portfolio companies. Again, it's about 10 or 12. Um, so the first step is there. Uh, and that's a, a big help to, to, the, to the startups. Our next stage is can we get those, those apps that have uh, those services that have the 160 million users? Mm -hmm. So then cross promote some of our other companies. And again, it's all for revenue share. Uh, so right now we're revenue sharing, our startups are revenue sharing to China uh, Mobile, without, Samsung. Uh, with zero marketing cost, right? Yeah, zero marketing cost. Uh, of course, the companies do their own marketing and they can mm -hmm. pay, um, but it's uh, zero marketing cost. So that's um, the vision. Um, first step took a while. Uh, we've got a bunch of apps with users. And now we're looking to uh, get more apps, uh, more users through our corporate partnerships, but then also try and do this cross promotion thing. And hopefully by the end of this year, we'll, we'll get some traction there. That's really impressive numbers for zero marketing. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, as well, uh, you mentioned that 78% of startups fail. Uh, so uh, before. Ah, okay. Yeah. Uh, now we're uh, about 70% surviving. <laughs> so, ah, okay, yeah. so around 30% of startups uh, fail. Uh, at which uh, stage do they usually fail? And uh, what uh, common reason for the failure of this or that startup do you see? What, yeah. what can be learned from those mistakes? 
I think the, the most important thing uh, that we try and, and, and push is not, uh, not blitz scaling. So blitz scaling is spending lots of money uh, unprofitably to grow really big, really fast. Mm -hmm. um, because we're focused on global emerging frontier markets, uh, there's not always capital available. It's not that easy to raise VC. So what we really focus on is positive unit economics. You spend a dollar, mm -hmm. you get more than a dollar back. Mm -hmm. And until you do that, everything is an experiment. Once you have a positive ROI or a positive return, you spend a dollar more than a dollar comes back, mm -hmm. then you can scale it. So it's, we call it traction first, fundraising later. You, mm -hmm. you get the positive unit economics, then when you have that, then you raise the money, then you spend mm -hmm. it to grow, and then keep on and growing. So it's, it, you get a lot um, slower growth, okay, mm -hmm. than say a blitz scaling approach. Uh, but on the other hand, you're building a real business, and when you have a downturn like we're currently in, our companies are doing very well because they're basically able to go break even anytime they want to. Um, and so a lot of companies who were blowing, you know, spending cash, losing money, they're in a big trouble now uh, mm -hmm. where most of our companies are our best position. So it's a bit around discipline and making sure that, you know, you, you, you spend a dollar, you get more than one dollar back. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. the right approach. And, uh, well, it wasn't always the right approach <laughs> <laughs> because uh, the last two years, you know, it was a boom time mm -hmm. and everybody was growing, raising $100 million and, and uh, our companies were not. Um, but, you know, it's, I think it's like the, you know, the rabbit and the turtle, the, mm -hmm. the rabbit and the hare. So the rabbits keep on going and our, our, our companies are more like the turtles <laughs> and hopefully in the end we'll win. Yeah, the results is one of the most 